Good evening, Wastelanders, fellow boys and ghouls. Cregan here with a special camp build video. I figured in honor of Night of the Moth update coming on December 7th that I would build a Mothman themed camp, specifically the Church of the Mothman. I picked up the haunted house packs from the Atom Shop a few weeks back and decided it was time to put them to use. So here we are in the mire, specifically between the Retreat and Haven Church. And we're just going to plop the camp module right here on the edge of this bay with the retreat visible just ahead in the distance. I've already placed this module down as I wanted to get a couple of turrets up as, uh, as just to deter some unwanted guests. Every few spawn-ins I seem to get some anglers just to the south and they could be annoying when they do spawn. We're going to start off by placing our first floor on the tip of this island aiming towards the retreat. The reason for this is we want to have the last two rows be on that island back there so that they aren't floating when we raise them. It's a bit awkward to get in one shot, so you may have to pick up some pieces and start over. Starting with this first piece, we're going to manage to squeeze just one more on the edge of the build zone, then go six more straight back towards the retreat. Finally, we're going to put five more on either side for a total of three across. Next, we're going to put the walls around the outside, place a ramp in that back corner, and two more rows in the back. Once that row is in place, it is no longer considered floating, and we can remove the ramp and place some stairs instead. For the upper platform, we're going to start with a regular sized wall, some half walls, corners, and a regular wall in the middle, and finish off the rest of the sanctuary walls with some half height windows. For the interior platform wall, we're going to place the cabin door frames as those double stack nicely and convert them back to haunted walls after. Next, we're going to build the three-story bell tower, but first some scaffolding to help us get to the higher levels without having to use the jetpacks. Once that's in place, put down a set of full and half walls, a ceiling to place the lamps on, and another two rows of half walls. The lights in the windows place large toolboxes with oil lamp posts on top, and top it off with whatever these guys are called, and we're all set. Yikes, it got dark. To keep the rain out, let's put on the ceiling next. Starting with the bell tower end, we'll put the slanted walls, sloped roofs, and cap off the other end with a window. The back room will get a similar setup, but at a lower height so as to not block out the candles we're eventually going to put in the window. For the roof peak, use capped pieces on the end and open-ended pieces in the middle for consistency. I'm using the regular roof tiles as I don't want to have that raised window that comes with the haunted pack on every piece. Now that the bulk of the structure is done, let's start placing some of the decor and wiring. Since this is a Mothman church, I'm going to mostly use candelabras and cultist torches to light the interior, but I will need power for my vendors and I would like to have some signage facing the road in the distance. As I don't own the vault tech generators and the sound of gas generators would just ruin the vibe and atmosphere, I'm going to place a billboard with solar panels on top and wire it up to the back of the bell tower. Since the lettering I chose to put on the board does not snap together, I used the seasonal game boards as guides. As I didn't feel like scrapping and repeating that process, eh, here's one I prepared earlier. I'll start by placing the vendors down on either side of the door, and as I don't like my wiring to be visible, I'll guide it off to the corners and along the edge of the roof with power conduits and bring it up top towards the center. To connect it to the conduit on the outside of the tower, we're going to have to drill a small hole in the roof with a flamethrower. With the roof broken, we're free to connect our two conduit pieces, and once the roof is repaired, we see the wire is still connected, providing power to my vendors down below. I gotta get rid of these guys. It's the second batch of them to come through here. Not that I'm complaining. I'll take nuclear key cards.
Before we place the pews, we'll need to change the floor to the original concrete so as to line up the edges nicer, and also place curtains, as there's a small collision zone around them that prevents us from placing the pews right up against the windows. You can use either style except long curtains, as those will collide with the stairs. To make it easier to line the alternating pews, place rugs in the aisle along the outer edge. Now we'll need some icons and sacraments. Naturally, paintings of lighthouses should be revered by all followers of the Mothman, and as this is Fallout, a dish of candy and a bowl of Nuka Shine will also work perfectly. Before we put the pulpit together, place a shelf on the wall with a pair of candles and slide it up the wall until it's level with the window. For the pulpit itself, I use the western bar and some candles and a small couch flanked by a pair of cultist altars. Central to the entire shrine is an effigy to the Mothman himself. Behind the pulpit, I placed a door frame and the entrance to the abandoned mine, as well as the stash and scrap boxes for easy access. I won't be placing any of my crafting stations in this camp as everything is in my shelter, and this is more of a decorative camp than a functional one. Finish up the decor with some fireflies, double doors, and pumpkins, and you have yourself a Church of the Mothman. Well, that's my Mothman-themed camp, which I'll probably be leaving up for the entire night of the moth season. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more videos and content. I'm Cregan, reminding you to leave a candle out for the Mothman tonight.